There is some hubris on display in Canberra at the moment, some very dangerous hubris on climate and energy. The Albanese Labor government's climate change and energy minister is Chris Bowen, as you know, and his basic shtick is to be smug and cocky. Early days, hey? He's got two main messages on repeat. Both are deeply misleading. One is designed to frighten everyone. He says global warming is already making life hell and it's only going to get worse. And the other is designed to reassure us by claiming that he is going to fix our energy crisis and cool the planet by turning Australia into a renewable energy superpower, whatever that is. This is dangerously delusional stuff, but on it goes. The truth is no Australian is spared from the impact of climate change, from the cities to the regions. Ain't that the truth? It's the renewable energy policies driven by climate change policies that have driven up electricity prices right around the country, making sure that no one is spared. So that we have the, the absurd situation now where the federal government is actually trying to impose price caps on the coal and gas supply, supplying Australia's energy at the moment. This is the same coal and gas that the climate change policies, the energy policies, have deliberately been trying to force out of the market. Well, they've succeeded in making the economics for coal and gas very fraught, so fraught that stacks of fossil fuel generation has been forced out of the market, making what's left behind even more expensive, of course. So we've got governments subsidising gas generation to keep it around now and trying to cap prices on coal. I mean, make up your minds. Do you want to drive these generators out, price them out of the market, or do you want their power to be cheaper so they can stick around? This is typical of the policy paradoxes and practical complications we get from these climate and energy policies. And Bowen's crusade just continues. A third of Australia's emissions come from our electricity system. Renewable energy is the answer to this crisis, not the cause. Well, yeah, that's what they've been saying for years in Europe, in countries like Germany, a country that the green left in Australia has often touted as being at the vanguard of the renewables transition. Well, check this out. That famous German car maker, Volkswagen, recently announced that it would stop making internal combustion engines a decade from now. By 2033, all Volkswagens will be electric vehicles. Sounds great, right? Got to get away from the fossil fuels and plug our cars into a renewable energy grid. But that means Volkswagen needs to make a stack of car batteries. And guess what? To make batteries, you need a lot of energy. So now Volkswagen is saying that the soaring energy costs in Germany, not to mention the unreliability, because it's totally mangled its switch to renewables. Well, those costs are so high that they'll render their battery plants unviable. Unless we manage to reduce energy prices in Germany and Europe quickly and reliably, investments in energy-intensive production of new battery cell factories in Germany and the EU will be practically unviable, said VW's executive. The value creation in this area will take place elsewhere. Well, yeah, you bet. The batteries will have to be made somewhere else, like China, where there's cheap energy supplied by some of the coal-fired generators that they're still building while they continue to increase their emissions. So Germany hurts itself and there's no net reduction in global emissions. This is so typical. It's exactly how Australia is hurting itself too. What a shambles. So let's get back to Bowen and his first annual climate statement to Parliament. It was full of alarm. Our beautiful land has always been subject to natural disasters, but those disasters are becoming increasingly devastating, increasingly frequent, increasingly unnatural. Now, this is quite familiar fear-mongering. It just struggles to stand up when you judge it against the facts. This global study shows that the trend in weather disasters over the past two decades has actually been downwards globally. And certainly when it comes to deaths from disasters, the trend over the past century is stark and wonderful to see. 
Is it too much to ask politicians to refrain from anecdotal alarmism and ask them to stick to the facts? Apparently it is. Have a listen to this. Changing rainfall and worsening heat will make our world-class agricultural sector less productive and harder to work. Our world-class agriculture less productive? Well, no one would deny the vagaries confronting our farmers, the droughts and the floods especially, but they've always faced them. How about the outcomes? Last year, the Australian Bureau of Agricultural and Resource Economics and Sciences announced a record crop, the largest Australian wheat production on record over the season of 2020-21. Great stuff for our farmers, great for all of us, in fact, but little more than a year on, that's already been topped. Winter crop reports from ABARES say there's another new record of 36.3 million tonnes of wheat and also record barley and record canola output too. So call it global warming, call it higher CO2 levels, call it better farming or just plain good luck. But we are seeing record crops, Chris Bowen, record crops. And other parts of the world have reported the same. So Bowen ought to rein in his confected alarmism and selective fear-mongering. No mention from him of Sydney's coolest November on record or one of Australia's coolest springs in decades. No, nah, it's only the hot days that count for the climate alarmists and only the bad news that interests them. But that's the message from Chris Bowen in the climate statement. Thanks to global warming, he said the world is going to hell in a handbasket, but he can fix it with wind turbines and solar panels in Australia. As the energy crisis worsens, this is going to get ugly.